Thank you very much for clicking on the video today. In Scotland last week, the law changed on organ donation, so now you have to opt out of it rather than opt in to giving your organs. I was on the radio and on the TV last week talking about that exact issue, trying to raise awareness for it. I want to do that in today's video. But first of all, I fancy a milkshake, so I'm going to go and get that first. <laughs> What do we have? Oh, we have my mum, Mother Lizzie. There we go. If any of you kind, kind people would like to buy me anything really from this store, I would be much appreciated. Anything indeed. Any, any item of, maybe not that, but I mean anything else. I'll definitely, definitely take that off your hands if there's one going. There she is. Okay, that's me arrived at the Sainsbury's petrol station in the West End and yeah, somebody pulled right up next to me and I don't think I'm gonna be able to get out the space that I've just parked in, so that's all fun, but I need to go and get lip balm, that is the priority, so time to put on the mask. <sighs> I only just got in that car, it was such a difficult space to get into. I got the lip balm. That is a positive, so hopefully that's a sign of things to come for today. Now I'm going to head to McDonald's to get a milkshake. Which one do you think I should get? Hi, can I have a six chicken nugget meal, please? What's it doing? Uh, banana milkshake. Thank you. I've arrived at Park Circus where I wanted to come and eat my lunch today. I consider the milkshake more of a dessert and a McDonald's meal rather than like the drink that comes with the food. They're just incredible. I'm quickly going to explain to you the story of why I feel so strongly about organ donation. So, as I've talked about on this channel before, my brother sadly passed away in 2018, my brother Craig. Craig suffered with a lifelong and terminal condition called pulmonary hypertension, um, which is basically a very, very serious heart and lung condition. At the end of Craig's life, Craig unfortunately passed away uh, as a result of a brain aneurysm, and it wasn't actually related to the illness that he'd suffered with all of his life. So when Craig did, unfortunately and unexpectedly pass away uh, in August of 2018, just at the end of the process when Craig was in intensive care, the organ donation specialist nurses came up to us and they asked us as a family, what would we like to do with Craig's organs? Would we be open to um, donating them if that were to be possible? And Craig was quite severely ill in many respects, so we didn't think he was going to be able to donate his organs. But it just so happened that we'd had a conversation two weeks prior to that at a family wedding, talking about organ donation, talking about our last wishes, songs we'd have at our funeral songs. That These were things we'd talk about as a family because we, we lost... My mum lost her husband, me and my brother, we lost our dad in 2009. I was 11 at the time, Craig was about 17, 18. And so we had been through a family bereavement and we knew that talking about these things was quite important. As ever, I digress, so back to the issue at hand. Craig ended up donating his organs, he donated his uh, two kidneys, his liver and his pancreas to three different men in the UK. One in his 20s, one in his 50s and one in his 60s. So Craig's organs actually went on to help other people. The fact Craig was able to go on and help other people by donating his organs at the end of his life. That gave us a great sense of uh, almost relief as a family. It gave us a great sense of pride to know that Craig was still living on and had helped other people in some way. Well, given all that, you then may ask, why do I feel the need to talk about it? Why do I feel able to go on and talk about it? And the reason is, is I think there's a huge importance for people who've been through grief and bereavement and have lost loved ones, whether that be recently or quite a while ago, I do think it leaves a lasting impact on every human being and that's why I think we should be more open, open to talk about it. And organ donation allows that. That conversation itself can then lead down different avenues and you can become more open with the people around you and the people that you love. So that's why I'm very passionate about it. That's why I, I wanted to talk about it. As a family, I would encourage you to have that conversation even though the law is changing. So now you no longer have to uh, opt into donating your organs, you just have to opt out. So it is taken as a given that you want to donate your organs in Scotland rather than you get to the end of your life and then you have to ask the family. The family can also still have a say. You can still say no if you don't want to donate your organs, that's perfectly fine. But you just have to make your wishes clear about that to your family. Okay, just quickly change the locations to change it up a bit and explore a little bit more of this park circus area, which is stunning by the way. I want to talk about how I got the chance to be on TV and radio. Uh, and it all started back when, after Craig passed away in 2018, we got invited by the organ donation 
uh, team in Scotland, the sort of a, uh, association, they invited us to a sort of ceremony where everyone whose families had agreed to donate organs, they were all given like a little plaque and it was just a ceremony to thank them all for, you know, the courageous act of allowing the organs of their family members or to, to support their family members and their wishes to donate their organs. And so that was a really, really nice event in Edinburgh. My mum and I went there a few years ago and it was really emotional. And we had, my mum went up and she collected the, the sort of certificate to say that we that Craig had donated his organs and it was a thank you from them to us. And it was a really nice moment, but it was a very powerful event as well because we started off the event by having someone stand in front of us and talk to us about how his donated heart that he had in him right at that moment saved his life. So that was a very powerful and poignant way and it set the tone for the rest of the day. A very emotional day, but that's how we got started. So we got invited along to that. We were then contacted again afterwards and asked if my mum would like to take part in an article for uh, some newspapers in Glasgow and Scotland. My mum wasn't too comfortable about going out and speaking about it. She didn't feel she could do it justice, although she did think it was a great idea and she was in full support of it. She just didn't feel that she had the ability to sell it to other people, so she asked me if I would like to do it, and I was like, absolutely, I would love to do that. And then fast forward to this year, um, I got an email again from the same people, uh, from the same agency, asking if I would go on TV and talk and basically do the same thing as I did in the newspaper article, talk about my experience on TV. And then literally the day before the TV uh, appearance was coming out on BBC Report in Scotland, they then emailed me later that night to say, look, we've got this radio uh, opportunity tomorrow. Would you be able to do it? And it's basically as live, you just go on and talk about your experience like you've did on TV, like you've did on uh, in the paper. Now I thought that was a very brave decision of them because they hadn't really seen me talk yet. They hadn't seen the broadcast from the BBC because it hadn't come out yet. And they'd only seen what was written about. And it's easier for a journalist to write an article. Given the fact that I work in TV production, you would think being on the TV would be a slightly easier prospect for me, but actually in fact it's not. I'm used to always being behind the camera, which is why I'm trying to do these YouTube videos to get more used to feeling what it's like to be in front of the camera. But the major point I wanted to talk about was my experience of um, been on the radio so I once I'd agreed to do it I was sitting waiting for the call I got the call the woman came on and she said it was the producer and she said look blah 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 uh, welcome thank you very much for doing this we really appreciate it and um, you're gonna be live in 30 seconds with the TV opportunity it was just a case of going up to the park near my flat in Glasgow uh, getting a camera put in my face ask questions and just answer them basically with uh, with the radio I had to do a little bit more prep because it's quite a fast-paced environment. There's not as much room for error because it's live. You, you, if you if there's certain things you want to say, you have to make sure that you say them in the allotted time. Otherwise, you're not going to get the chance again to say them. So I had made a list of all the things I wanted to talk about about Craig and his uh, decision to donate his organs. And so I had that little bit of preparation done, and it allowed me to then go on and talk about it. I've not actually listened to the radio broadcast back, so this is probably going to be the first time when I'm watching this edit because I've had to get the video sent to me by Connor, who recorded it on his phone. Uh, or recorded it on a screen record or something like that. So I'm going to play that for you now. So this is me as live on the radio talking about organ donation and about my brother Craig Murray. And Jamie, could you just tell me a bit about the, the difference that Craig's donation made? The thing with Craig's donation is he was able to help three different people. So a man in his 50s got Craig's kidney and his pancreas. Uh, a man in his early 60s also got his liver and uh, a young man in his 20s got his kidney. So Craig was able to make quite a big difference with the organs that he donated, which was a great sense of pride for us as a family. Mm. And f what, Jamie, was, was the conversation like in, in finding out about Craig's wishes? It was actually quite interesting because Craig passed away, unfortunately, quite unexpectedly, although he did live with a heart and lung condition uh, that was diagnosed when he was three years old. But two weeks prior to Craig passing away, we were actually at a family uh, wedding and Craig had relayed his wishes to us then that about his funeral, things that he would like, uh, songs that he would like to be played and the fact that he would like to be an organ, uh, he'd like to donate his organs which was very interesting. It was something that he did talk about quite a lot, he used to always say that he wanted to de uh, donate his body to medical science but he hadn't quite got through that process so the best he could do was organs which was still a, a great thing. And Jamie, what would be your message to people who are perhaps on the fence about donating? 
Um, I think it is a really important conversation still to have. I think the change in the law is really welcomed by many people, as we've just discussed. But I think for I, I think my advice would probably be have the conversation with your family as much as you can, because even if it is the other way and you don't want to donate your organs, it's always better to know exactly the wishes of your loved one when they do pass away. If you could take anything away from this video today, please take away this. Have the conversation with your family. Even though the law's changed, it's best for your family to know your wishes. I said that at the end of the BBC interview, which I've just shown you. And I think it is really important and it's something I'd like to reinforce today in this video. Have that conversation with your family. Let your wishes be known. I literally have a text that I sent my mum every time I'm updating it and it says funeral songs because you just literally don't know when the final curtain's going to call. So do these things. Put the planning and preparation in now and it'll be a whole lot easier in the future. Have the conversation with your family. Be open, be honest, start talking about the way that you feel, start talking about your wishes. Thank you very much for watching this video. This has been another sort of deep emotional video, but it's something that I wanted to make for a few weeks now. I'm glad that, I'm glad the appearance on TV has been shown, and I was glad I was able to be on the radio as well to talk about organ donation. Have the conversation with your family, and finally, do not regret growing older. It's a privilege denied to many. Thank you very much. Please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.